Hey, VC, it's uh, Jonathan, the Cheap and Cheerful Record Collector. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, so this is going to be a little different video. I've been thinking about doing this one for a while now. Um, this can be a video about a concert I went to. Um, we got to go back. We got to go way back. 1967, uh, my senior year in high school, um, Easter weekend, or Easter week. It was uh, Easter 1967, right? at the RKO 5th, 58th Street in New York City, 58th Street and 3rd Avenue, uh, a local DJ, Murray the K, used to have these rock and roll shows where he'd have six, seven, eight bands. they each do two or three songs, get them in, get them out. We went to the show. I was I lived north of the city, about an hour north, and Buddy and I took a, a uh, the bus into New York City. And according to this, I guess we were there on Monday because, well, I'll show you. Um, it says, Murray the K presents live in person, uh, a total audience involvement. Starts tomorrow for nine days. Uh, free albums every day before noon. Doesn't say how much it was, but I'm thinking it was like two and a half dollars. So they have each day, start like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, at four different acts, depending on which day you went to open up. We went there Monday. And the Monday opening act was a local band, a New York City band, and it was Simon and Garfunkel. So they were the opening act. Uh, we knew them because, you know, we were New Yorkers and we knew Simon and Garfunkel. They just started to get really big then. And they were just taken off in the beginning. So they were on there, the first bill. Uh, that's what we're listening in the background is this album. Um, next came up, they had a, a group of comedians and they were called the Hardly Worth It Players. And I'm pretty sure that they were the forerunner of the Saturday Night Live. The Hardly Worth, Hardly, the, what are they called? The, not, not quite ready for primetime players. So I think it was some of the same people. I can't guarantee, I can't swear to it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. After them, they had another, another New York City band came up. And this was a band that I had seen many times. Actually, they played at my high school one year. And that was... The Blues Project. Sorry about the glare there. And that was the Blues Project, Al Cooper, uh, Danny Callip, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm sure you all know the Blues Project. Uh, Al Cooper went on to form Blood, Sweat and Tears. He was then kicked out of Blood, Sweat and Tears. And he played on Bob Dylan's album, Blonde on Blonde, etc., etc. So that was the second act. So, so far you've had Simon and Garfunkel and Blues Project. Then they had an act, or then they had the, uh, um, then they had Jackie and the K Girls, which was Murray the K and his, his girls that they sang around dance. It was sort of really cheesy. Uh, there was a group from Canada called Mandela, who I don't remember them at all. Um, then they had a group from England. And the only reason I knew this group at all is that my parents had been to London the year before and brought me back a magazine of rock music and stuff. And they were on the cover of that magazine. I wish I still had that, but I don't. And it was their first time ever playing in the United States for this, this weekend. I didn't see the first show on Friday, but it was the first weekend they ever played in the United States. And it was The Who. Pete Townsend and band. Um, you know, uh, Keith Moon was crazy. Uh, Townsend started smashing his guitar and we were all sitting in the audience going, what the hell is going on? There was smoke coming out from behind the uh, amplifiers. Some guy put dry ice there. Keith Moon kicked his drum set over. It was, it was just crazy. Um, they did, I remember they did my generation. I can't remember the other songs they did, but they, they ended up doing more than two songs. They did at least three or four or five songs. And first time who ever played in the United States, I was there for that. That was sort of cool. Then they had another band from England, and it was also their first time ever playing in the United States. And the only reason I knew about this band is I knew one of the guys in the band had been in another band earlier that I knew and uh, was very fond of. And first time in the United States was Cream. Uh, they came out, and they're supposed to do two or three songs each, like two or three minutes, but of course they did Crossroads, they did Toad, they played for like almost a half hour. And it was just, it was another world. I mean, it was just something we had never seen before between the Who and Cream playing together. 
at this show in New York, it was like another, a whole, a whole other generation had spanned. It was a whole new thing was opening up for everybody. And it was, it was crazy. It was really unbelievably amazing. So I got to see Cream and The Who both the first time they were played in the United States. Next act they brought out was, oh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles never showed up. They were supposed to play. There was a big hassle with Murray the K. He wouldn't pay him, whatever it was. They didn't show up. So they weren't there, which was sort of sort of a bummer because I was hoping to see them. But the next act was a, just tore the place up again, uh, went a totally different way for this act. And the next act up was Wilson Pickett. And he did Land of a Thousand Dances, uh, Mustang Sally in the Midnight Hour. Again, the juxtaposition of having Simon and Garfunkel doing their country, doing their uh, folk stuff, and Cream and uh, Who doing their psych stuff. And then all of a sudden having Wilson Pickett doing his soul stuff was a great, great show. Just unbelievable. And then finally, the last act, the headliner of the whole show was a guy who had a number one hit at the time. And we were looking forward to it, but it didn't really work out the way we expected it. So this guy came up and it was Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. And when Mitch Ryder came out and started playing, it really seemed like life had passed him by. Cream and the Who were a new generation and Mitch Ryder was the old generation. And he was trying to perform and he was jumping in the audience and trying to get the audience going. And it was like so old fashioned compared to what the Who and Cream was doing. Everybody was like people booing him and throwing. It was really embarrassing for Mitch Ryder. People really didn't get into him at all. And uh, New Yorkers, we didn't take any crap. So people started booing and throwing stuff. Didn't turn out great, but uh, it was a very interesting show for sure. And um, that was the Murray the Case show I went to in 1967 in New York. Um, I was looking on the line and I can't find anything about what the price was. Here's the, oh, I lost it. Here's the original, a copy of the original poster from the show. And as you can see, Murray the K, etc. So that was the concert I went to, uh, 1967, Easter week in New York City. Um, just thought that was an interesting little uh, show I went to, saw some great stuff. And uh, if anybody's ever been to a show where there were multiple acts, especially seeing guys for the first time you'd never seen before. And something interesting, I'd love to see videos of those if you, if, uh, you want to make one or two. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. I've got a couple of new subscribers. I want to welcome them aboard and thank everybody who's watching. Um, if you would like what you saw and you want to see more, just click the little button down below, subscribe and hit that bell so you get to see all the new videos I put up. And uh, until next time, Peace.